and again, that is the prayer of our hearts. That yes, we need you every hour. The times of joy, we need you. I pray that Lord, yes, you'll speak to our hearts. That Lord, by your grace, the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth will be acceptable to you, only who is my rock and my redeemer. For Lord, this we ask, trusting and believing in Jesus' name, and we all say it. We said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Thank you very much. Buana Asifiwe. Buana Asifiwe. God is good. And all the time. Amen. I had warned us that uh, our time, uh, we may spill over. But it's gone faster than I thought, so let me try to be a bit brief as we move on. Allow me not to go into recap for last week's uh, sermon. And so today we are looking at uh, pressing on in fear and in trembling. I know all of us, wherever we are, we have our own stories, how we came into faith, how we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal savior. Uh, some of us, it may be very dramatic. Uh, some of us, not as dramatic. Some of us, there are those that have heard, yes, they were sleeping and the Lord woke them up. Yes, they said that prayer and they accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Our sister, it's a glorious moment here today just to know the Lord Jesus Christ on a Sunday and in a Sunday service. So we have different stories. Mine was when I was just seeking to be a church member like the classes that are going on today. And it's that time that it occurred to me that I wanted to be a church member. And yes, I was not born again. I did not know Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And so the people that were conducting the classes, they called me aside. They spoke to me. I understood that it was not just being a, about a, a church member, but the Lord was interested first in my heart and in my life even before I became a church member. But what Paul is talking about here today is that after we've gotten born again, and that after we've known the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, that we continue in that journey in a way that brings glory and in a way that brings honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. That after we are born again, we should not take it lightly. For it is not yet done until we are on the other side of eternity. And so if you prefer, and because I want to move a little bit fast, I will talk to us about three things. The first one will be our steps. Come on, say with me, our steps. The second one will be our strength. Say it louder, our? And the third one will be our shine. The third one will be? So the number one is our? And number two? And number three is shine. That's what we'll be talking about. Let's look at the first one. Verse 12, Paul says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to walk, to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The essence of this particular point is obedience. Always walk in obedience, if you prefer. That's what Paul is talking about. He says that, yes, they have always obeyed. There is no single moment that they did, need to, they, they did not obey. The Philippians had always walked in obedience, obeying the word of God. And so, in a sense, it's their walk the way they were walking, they were walking in obedience. And that's why I'm calling it our steps. For if you make more than one step, then it becomes a walk. Every single step that they made, they did it in obedience to that which they had received from the Lord. They walked their steps. They were those steps of obedience. They continue, that's what Paul is encouraging them, to continue, to continue to do what? To continue to work out 
their salvation. One of the things you need to know from there is that as they are working, it is not the working that brought the salvation. No, the salvation came by grace because we cannot earn our salvation. So it came by grace. So he's saying the door has been opened to you and you have gotten in. Continue in your walk. Continue in your steps to be diligent so that you continue to stay in that house that the door has been opened. So continue every day as you make your step. Please continue with fear and trembling. Now, the New English translation translates this phrase this way. Continue working out your salvation with awe and reverence. Okay? Once you meet God, please esteem God in high regard with awe and with a fear. And it's not fear of death. It's that fear that brings respect. Those steps that you make every single day of your life, they should be those ones that ensure that God is still held very high in, his, in our relationship with him. One of the most lamentable characteristics of modern Christianity is the lack of awe when we come into the presence of God. Even as we continue in our daily walk, in our daily steps with the word, in, in the walk of salvation. Reverence and wonder that God is highly exalted and that by his grace, by his grace, we are his children. I see that in today's society, there is a lot of casualness as we relate with God and as we walk this walk of faith. You see it everywhere. Haven't you seen when politicians, they are there. They start their, their, their sentences nowadays. Bona yesu is that true? And yet when they live there, there is no... In fact, the one that I found that almost, allow me to say, almost like a blasphemy is when a Muslim politician starts because he knows where he is. And he says, Bona yesu God is good all the time. And people respond. The casualness by which we take our walk with God is what Paul is warning us here about. Look at sometimes even the pulpits in the church. That which we have allowed in the name of getting more people to come, not to build the kingdom of God, but sometimes to build the kingdom of man. A lot of casualness. I think it's the other day or the day before yesterday that we were talking, I think we were going somewhere with Pastor Irene, and we were talking about even those that we call Christian musicians. In fact, nowadays they're not even called musicians. They're called Christian artists. Okay? Look at the songs that they are singing. On one hand, they are singing songs that cannot even be, you, you, you cannot even be comfortable to sing them. On the other hand, they come and they sing a song that looks like it's a gospel musician that is singing. Casualness. Paul is asking, please do not be casual in your daily steps, in your daily walk with God. God is still God. God needs to be revered. When you look at the prophets of old, when they, met Jesus, when they met God, you can see what they did because God is God and he should never be taken lightly. Look at Moses. When Moses came almost face to face off with God, what did he do? He had, to have his, 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 he had his, his head bowed, removing his shoes, acknowledging that this is truly a holy ground. Wonderful people of God. As yes, God has saved us by his grace. And yes, as we acknowledge that he's our father, he is still God and he cannot be mocked. We have to be a people that when we say we are Christian, we live with that commitment that the things that we do in our lives, they are steps, single steps that we make every day that show that we respect and that we honor God. There is a way in which a Christian is supposed to live. We are not just to be Christians on Sunday. Look at when, when, when Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, the Bible says this, that in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was highly exalted, 
seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him was seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces because of the awe of God. They could not even face God. They covered their face, and all they were doing was to sing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. We should never take our walk with God lightly. Even Paul himself, when he was on the way persecuting Christians, when he was struck by the presence of God, he had to make a turnaround. I pray that our steps, if you prefer our walk with God, will not be to take our salvation lightly and casually. Paul elsewhere, writing to, 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 to Romans chapter 6 verse 1, he says that now that we are born again, should we continue sinning so that we experience more grace? He says no, because once we are born again, we are dead to Christ and we only live in him. Elsewhere he says, behold, if you are a Christian, you are a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. We cannot continue with life as usual. There is a way in which a Christian needs to speak. There is a way in which a Christian needs to conduct his life. There is a way in which a Christian needs to conduct his relationships. There is a way in which a Christian conducts his business. And that is in recognition that now we belong to a holy God. And therefore, continue in that journey of faith with fear and trembling. You are steps. You should not compromise. But even when it is very difficult, you have a strength inside of you. And that strength comes from God himself. Therefore, continue to rely on him every single day. John writing in the book of 1 John chapter 4 verse 4 says, You dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. In us, once we accept him and he lives in us, he gives us the ability to be able to continue to live for him, to be able to continue to serve him, to be able to say no and to live only for the principles of God in our different areas of life. A young boy was traveling in a bus with his grandparents who were seated behind, beside him, but also with a grandparents who were seated be, beside him. And these grandparents happened to have been a seminary professors. The boy was reading a Sunday school material, home paper. And the professor thought he would have some fun with the boy. And the professor said, this old professor, young man, young boy, said the professor, if you can tell me something God can do, I will give you a big, 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 shiny apple. The boy thought for a moment, and then he replied to the professor, Sir, if you can tell me something God cannot do, I will give you a whole basket of apples. In other words, in that little boy, in that little Sunday school child, he knew that there is nothing that is impossible with God. And therefore, Paul says, Yes, Philippians, you may be going through persecution." Even as I write to you, I am writing to you from a prison. I am writing to you because I'm constrained. But I know that yes, there are certain things that they may take from you. But there are certain things that they may not take from you. First of all, it is your faith. And to be able to have that hope. And to know that God gives us all the strength to be able to overcome. And to live a life. That pleases him. Yes, wonderful people. To live this life, we need to be careful about our steps. And they need to be with fear and trembling. But also we need to know 
that our strength comes from God and God alone. The old theologian Charles Spurgeon is the one who said that without the Spirit of God, we can do nothing. We are as sheep without the wind, branches without the sap, and like coals without fire. We are useless. And yet, on the other hand, with God, we can be dynamite. May we know that, yes, even in the difficult times like the Philippians were facing, we need to keep our steps, but also to be alert that our strength comes from God and God only. And so he continues to say, for it is God who works in you. And so he says, because God works in you, they may be subduing you. Listen to what he's saying. In those circumstances when it's, they're coming so much hard on you. He says, do everything without grumbling or arguing. So that you may become blameless. Yes, they may be tempting you. Yes, they may be pushing you to a corner. But because our strength is God in himself, we are able to stand. And we are able to face life in this particular context without fear and without grumbling and even without arguing. Number three, our shine. Our shine. So it says, you continue to read, that if we do so, by God's grace we will be blameless and that we will be children of God without fault, in a warped and crooked generation, then you will shine among them like the stars in the sky. Now, acknowledges, and perhaps if, if Paul could say in those days that that generation was a warped and a wicked generation, I wonder what he will say in our society today. And those same words can be used in our society today. But he says that if you keep your steps in check and if we keep our strength in check, no matter what comes our way, we are able to rise above and in a sense we are able to shine. And to be able to shine basically means people will be able to see us and people will be able to see the mark of Jesus Christ in our lives. The generations may be bad. The times may be difficult. But if we keep our steps in check and we are so cognizant about our strength, then our shining, regardless of the times, indeed is inevitable. And so he says, then you will shine among them like stars. As you hold firm to the word of life, and then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and a service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. I said you will see that word rejoice many times. And he's saying rejoice and yet he's in prison. It is only possible if we check every single step that we make in life. And our strength is God. That we can go through life, all the good life, sometimes the challenging life, with a smile. And we'll be able to shine. And Paul will be able to say that yes, his labor was not in vain. He says that his life is almost, the, the, the other place you see that terminology, almost being poured out, is, is, is uh, I think, Second Timothy, chapter 4, verse 7. And he says that I'm almost being poured out like a drink offering. But then he says, I have fought the good fight, and I have, kept the, the, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith, and therefore there is a reward that waits for me. That is only possible if, yes, we continue in those steps that honor God. And we continue having our eyes fixed on Jesus as our only strength. 
but we will shine like stars. Rather than feeling intimidated by the pagans and a crooked and warped generation, rather than cowering and hiding from their society, Paul wanted the Philippians to shine like stars. The phrase shining as stars in the universe is more accurately translated as appearing as luminaries in the world. In other words, being able to provide the light in this dark world and being able to provide that hope in a world that is full of darkness. Either way, Paul wanted the testimony and behavior of the Philippians to shine so brightly and manifestly to those that were around them. Paul wanted the Philippians to be like luminaries, light bearers in the world, rather than rather even in the universe and thus be witnesses of Jesus Christ remember Jesus Christ talked about the same in the book of Matthew chapter chapter 5 known as the sermon on the mount and he says you are indeed the light of the world a city on a hill cannot be hidden neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl instead they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father who is in heaven. But yes, when we keep our steps in check, and yes, when we know where our strength is, by the grace of God, our shine will be seen by the world and by his grace be able to draw people to himself as a powerful testimony. A few examples, maybe just one because of time. The, the, the book of Genesis, towards the end, closes in one of the most powerful ways. Remember, Joseph's brothers, they had sold him. And when they sold him, the Lord just allowed him to prosper wherever, wherever he went. And a time came that they were reunited and when they were reunited, I'm cutting the, the, the story. When they were reunited, the brothers, when they realized that it was Joseph, they didn't know what Joseph was going to do to them because Joseph was now a powerful man. Listen to what Joseph writes at that book concludes. But Joseph said to them, when they were trembling and they were in fear, wondering what is this Joseph going to do to us, Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. I am in the place of God. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and he spoke kindly to them. In other words, regardless of where you put Joseph, Joseph kept his step well, walking with God. In fact, remember when he was being tempted by Potiphar's wife? He did not say, what if my master finds out? He says, I cannot sin against my God. He kept his steps. He had his eyes fixed on his strength who is God. And when we do that, regardless of what happens, even when they want to put him in prison, God allows him just to shine. God allows him just to flourish. God allows him to go beyond the difficult circumstances. And I want to tell us this morning, this afternoon rather, that if we obey the Lord regardless of the circumstances, they may be difficult. They may even want to subdue us. But the Lord by his grace will allow you to shine for the honor and for the glory of his name. A story is told by David Jeremiah. He spoke of Dr. P.P. Job, who was speaking at a Christian rally in New Delhi, in India, in 1998. And after the rally, he received threats against his life. At the time, his son Michael was training at the university to be a medical missionary. One evening, 
a white Fiat car with daily number plates, traveling at a high speed, changed lanes, rammed into Michael, the son of uh, Dr. Job, and killed him instantly in that accident. And the car sped away without stopping and without being able to be traced. Michael died from the injuries of that accident that came as a result of a threat to his father when his father was preaching in India. Dr. Job, the father of Michael, was inconsolable. It happened because I am a preacher of the word of God, he said. I was shattered. There are no words to describe the pain that I went through. But then he says this. As he read his Bible, he found Philippians, the text that we've been reading, and in particular chapter 1, verse 12, where he says, the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. They've actually allowed him to continue to shine. That verse strengthened Dr. Job Michael's father's faith, imparting courage to advance the gospel. And wonderful people, as we talk today, there is the Michael Job Orphanage. There is the Michael Job High School. There is the Michael Job Residential Art and Training College. And the Michael Job Memorial Chapel. Multitudes and many people have been inspired by the story. And God is gaining glory for himself throughout India because a father was inwardly strengthened. And the shine continued. Wonderful people of God. I do not know where you are today. We may be in not so easy circumstances. But I can assure you one thing. That if we keep our steps. And we have our eyes fixed on our strength. Then God by his grace. Will allow our shine beyond the circumstances. When we keep in step. When we rely on his strength. He will let us shine. He will be known. We will be known for who we truly are. We will be authentic. Yesterday, I saw someone write a message that I found to be interesting and allow me to translate it or, or, or to use that illustration. And he had the picture, and I didn't think it was true. He had a picture... Of, you remember the old baking powder? You remember it? She took this picture. You, you all remember this? She took this picture. And she posted it. And she said this. Since I was born, this product has never changed. The package is the same. The colors are the same. The design is the same. The content is the same. The quantity is the same. And this is what it says. It does not even advertise. Have you seen this being advertised? And then it says, what kind of business arrogance is this? <laughs> but you know what? If you choose to have your eyes fixed on Jesus, others will come, they will go. But you will remain. You will not need to be advertised. Oh, they will come. I see, I see my wife using nowadays. There, there's another one that is called self-raising. Okay? But this baking powder will still remain. And that is what, what Paul is saying. That if you remain consistent, if you remain true to your calling, if you remain true to the word, you will not even need to be advertised. The other ones, they will shout, oh, X, oh, this self-raising. But this one, in fact, I didn't know I can get it. I asked Maureen, uh, she has a shop somewhere. Do you have this thing really? Yes, I have it. And she went and she got it. You will remain true and you will remain shining regardless of those that are doing marketing around you. Regardless of those that want ill around you, you will still remain intact. And that is what Paul is telling us today. I pray that by his grace, you will keep in step with him. I pray that 
by his grace, you will keep fixing your eyes and fixing our eyes on him alone, for he alone is our strength. I pray that as we continue keeping our eyes fixed on him and keeping our steps, the Lord by his grace, as we go through this year 2020, he will allow you to rise above everything else and to shine for the honor and for the glory of his name. And when Paul and the prophets of old, they look at us and say that the labor that they did, the work that they did, yes, it was not in vain. But even to ourselves, we'll be able to say, regardless of what we go through, yes, there may be the ups and the downs, but we will keep rejoicing in the Lord because, yes, the constant line that cuts across is that by his grace, he is our strength. And so may you go and watch our steps. May we go and have our eyes fixed on his strength. And by his grace, when we keep that faith and we keep living for him, he will allow us to shine beyond the circumstances. That when perhaps things are not going well on well around us, we can still be able to afford a smile. And that is only possible. Like the hymn writer says, trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus, but indeed to trust and obey. Worship him, please join me. Lord, allow us always to see that yes, as John also writes, that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And so therefore with you there is nothing that is impossible. Lord, allow us by your grace to shine and to shine beyond our circumstances. For Lord, this we ask, trusting and believing in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and your said. And so wonderful people as you go, I pray that the Lord bless you, that the Lord keep you, that the Lord make his face to shine upon you, that the Lord be gracious to you. I pray that you'll experience the favor of God in every single thing that you do this week. As you travel, as you go to work, as you are at home, at your businesses, that you will see the goodness of the Lord. For this we ask, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. And we all say it. We all say it. Amen. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore.